Hey, hi everyone. I'm Nana. Hope you're all doing good and staying safe. In today's video, we'll understand the very important topic called as Salesforce Data Load. We'll understand what are the different tools and APIs available to perform data load. How do we create object from spreadsheet? Differences between data input wizard and data loader. Talking about the business use case, one of the common requirements that we come across is how do we load data from spreadsheet into Salesforce? <clears throat> so, uh, talking about the spreadsheet, let me first open the spreadsheet. What we'll do is we'll leverage the out of the box functionality called as create object from uh, Salesforce. So, if you log into your developer org, go to your setup from this gear icon, click on this. You that's when you would see this particular page. Click on object manager. This is the page where you would see all of your objects, standard objects and custom objects. Standard objects is nothing but provided by Salesforce out of the box feature. Custom object, which you as a system admin create that. Now what we do is using the spreadsheet, we'll create a custom object. And this is the spreadsheet. Spreadsheet is nothing but a table. Table comprises of rows and columns. And this table name is SFTC One Stop Subscribers, which is which gonna be the custom object name within Salesforce application. All the column names are nothing but fields within Salesforce. This would be the fields. And this is the data, which is nothing but we call that data as records in Salesforce. Now let's see how do we create object from spreadsheet. I'll use my uh, login de developer login credentials in order to upload data from my CSV file. For today's demo, I would like to go with CSV file. You can also use Google Sheet or Office 365 or Excel SX uh, file as well. But let me uh, drop my this particular sheet one second. Let me open that. <laughs> So I just selected my spreadsheet, uh, which is CSV file, and then it, take, it takes me to this particular page where uh, it talks about the custom, uh, the column names over here, import file field name, and this would be the Salesforce field name. And you can also choose what should be the field type. The created date, probably I will go with the date field, and topics, I'll keep it as text. The default uh, one would be the text one. Like maybe I will go with uh, pick list here. Cloud, I'll also go with pick list even for this. You can always change your field types at any point of time. So that should not be a problem for us. And you can add all of these fields to the page layout, which means it should be visible to the end user and they can modify the data as and when needed or create new data from the user interface itself. That's the reason we need to add this to the layouts. And then we'll click on next. Over here, you can also choose the record name field. I will go with the default option. Let's say it's first create a re default record name, or you can also select any of the other columns available within the spreadsheet. Let me go with the default uh, option. I'll just click on next. It talks about the object properties where I can rename the object as well. Instead of going with the spreadsheet name, maybe I can change it to different name as well. That is always possible. And I wanted to define the object. Uh, I mean, I wanted to describe the object. You can just say that this object is meant for this particular business use case. So that way, and advanced settings, you can uh, enable and disable all of this feature on this particular page. You, if you don't want that object to be uh, searchable, then uh, uncheck this. If you don't want this object to be part of a reports, you can uncheck that. All of these features is something we have explained in the introductory video as well. So I'll skip this and I'll click on finish and I will go with all the options enabled. So this is as simple like within fraction of seconds or minutes, you will see the object gets created within Salesforce directly from your spreadsheet file. All we have done is just navigated to object manager page and clicked on custom object from spreadsheet. So this is very simple, easy to use feature. If you are a newbie, you can certainly go with this um, feature. So that is all. So that is all about 
how creating your object. And if you wanted to review that particular object, let me refresh this page. And I will do a quick find. And I'll just look for the object called as SFDC one stop subscribers. So you see this object is created today. That's the reason you see uh, 3rd September is a date. And you can also see different fields over here. You can also change, let's say, suppose you don't want this uh, particular object to be used by other users right now. What you can do is you can change the deployment status to in, de in development. That way, this particular object will not be visible to the end users, to the business users, because there are a couple of customization, uh, customizations that you still want it to do. These are the optional features which you can enable or disable reports or activities. You want activities to be part of this object, which is events and tasks. You can check or uncheck as per your business use case. Right now, uh, I'll just click on in development because, or maybe I will go with the deployed one because I wanted to have this feature available for my users. Now, if I wanted to create additional fields, all you have to do is come here, create new fields or change the pick list type by just clicking on edit. So this is something we have explained in the introductory sessions of Salesforce as well. So now let's understand how do we import uh, data because we have not imported data yet. So we'll, uh, what we'll do is we'll go with uh, the other options available within Salesforce, which is where we are talking about how do we load data into Salesforce. Import is nothing but loading data into Salesforce for which we have different tools Talking about different tools, all of those tools you would find under integrations, under setup, quick find, look for integrations, and these are different tools available. For today's demo, let me go ahead and uh, show you how do we use data input wizard. The other tools available is data loader client version, which is a desktop app, or you can also use the web version, which we call that as data loader.io. Let me explain uh, you all the differences between all these three tools, in which scenario you have to go with which tool. But first, let me talk about data input wizard. So I just click on data input wizard. It takes me to this particular page. And the first uh, section is, what are the recent input jobs that I have invoked using data input wizard? So you can see all the uh, top four uh, import jobs that I have uh, invoked using data input wizard, where you would see what is the status, what is the object for which I have imported the data, in which object I have imported the data, how many records got created, how many records got updated, how many records got failed, what is the start date, and what is the processing time, how much of time it has taken to load the data in milliseconds. You can also click on this in order to review the detail uh, details about that, what are the records fail, what is the error message. If you wanted to see how the error message it looks like, I will just open one of the file because I've downloaded this particular error message file before. So it's nothing but it's like duplicate, there is one duplicate um, data, duplicate record. That's the reason two records has got fail. I'm talking about this two records fail scenario. If you click on this bulk AP monitoring, it takes you to this page where you would see all the other jobs that has been invoked by data import wizard. And you can see oh, the details about that. For example, this particular first job, all I have to do is click on a job ID and click on view result. That's how you will get to know what are the different records that has been failed. OK, now what we'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, use the data import wizard. Where is my data import wizard under integration? And what I will do is I'll click on launch wizard and I'll select the custom object for today's demo. Under standard objects, so talking about the differences between a data loader and data input wizard, data input wizard, you can only load maximum 50,000 records at a time. For data loader, you can uh, import uh, 5 million records. So that's not it. So that's the reason you can, if there is a large volume of records, you can choose data loader. And even standard objects, there is only few standard objects which is supported by data input wizard. All of this is listed here. So for example, you wanted to load data into opportunity object or case object. These are the standard objects which is not supported. Then in that case, you can go with the data loader. Now for today's demo, 
we will use a custom object called as candidates. I wanted to add new records. There are three different functionalities. One is insert, add new records is nothing but insert, update existing records, it's update operation, and add new and update existing records. It's a upset operation. So it's like uh, the spreadsheet having a combination of new and existing records, the system will auto check, and then if there is no record, there's no existing record, it will create a new record. That is when you can go with upset functionality. Even for scenarios which you are not sure, you can go with upset functionality, whether the records are existing or not. For now, I wanted to go with this particular feature called as insert, add new records. Now, I wanted to ensure that there are no duplicate records as well. And then I can use this particular feature, match by name. And I wanted to choose the different record owner. Since I am loading the data, right now all the records will be owned by me. Just in case if I wanted to choose different user, I can go with this particular uh, feature, which user field. And contact field is not available for this particular object. But if you want a contact field to be matched, you can go with this particular third option as well. And if you wanted to turn off your triggers, workflows during the data input operation, you can simply uncheck. You can just check on this. That way, you can uh, trigger workflow rules and for new and updated records. If you wanted to trigger workflow rules for new and updated records, you can just check that. If you do not want to trigger, then you can just uncheck that, which is the default feature. Now, let me import, let me drag my CSV file here. Where is your data located? It is in CSV file. So we understood about the, the three different operations available within data input visa. The other difference between data input visa and data loader is Data loader, you can export all of your records. You can delete all of your record, records. But those are the features that is not available in data input visa. Because as the name indicates, it's used to import your data. And the maximum volume is 50K. I'll just click on next. So this is also one of the important interview questions, which is usually asked for system admin roles as well. So over here, you can map your uh, column names within your spreadsheet CSV file into your Salesforce object. So let's say, suppose for now, I don't have any contact field. That's the reason I'll keep it as unmapped. And even now, city is the column name, right? I wanted to map that particular city to different uh, field in Salesforce. Then I can just uh, click on uh, map and uh, map it to the relevant field. For now, it's like I'm going in the auto mapping feature. That is also something available in data input wizard of the, out of the box. And unmapped fields will not be imported. So that is fine. I don't want to import as well. So I'll just click on next because I'm good with the mapping part. I have reviewed it. It looks good. Auto mapping works for me. As these all are existing, this is an existing object. So here you see how many fields are mapped, how many fields are not mapped, and what is the operation. It's like add new records. It's insert operation. I'll just click on start import, and we'll see how many records got processed or failed over here. Over here, you see the, you, the records process are eight. How many records failed? Zero. None of the records got failed. How do you view the request? You just click on this. If you want to view the results, you can just click on view result. And uh, this is what I was showing you earlier as well. Um, this is how the result file looks like. In earlier scenario, I was able to identify duplicate records. That's the reason two records got failed. So the advantage of data input wizard is you can also, uh, that uh, by default, it takes care of duplicate management if you choose the relevant field under math section, which we have not chosen for today's demo. So that is all about data input wizard. We'll talk about the uh, different other features in a bit. So as I said, these are different tools available. Dataloader.io, Dataloader, this is something we'll discuss in detail in the next uh, session. Talking about the differences, there's something we've already covered, the number of records, which objects will be supported by data input wizard. All of those has been covered. Export is not supported. Uh, does it uh, look for duplicate uh, records? Yeah, Import Wizard does that by just clicking on Match option. 
and data loader doesn't uh, look for doesn't match duplicate records so this is a primary difference between import wizard and data loader for large volume it is always good to go with data loader and also for the few standard objects which is not uh, supported by import wizard now talking about the apis we have got different apis to load data into salesforce rest api soap api and bulk api few of the common apis which we see is being used to load data is soap api and bulk api rest api i have not seen much most of these scenarios we always go with soap api and bulk api talking about rest soap those are synchronous transactions and bulk api is asynchronous transaction when when i say asynchronous which means in salesforce any transaction which we call it as asynchronous which means there is no eta like fire and forget integration pattern is something that falls under when we say uh, synchronous you request uh, you uh, when we say synchronous transaction it follows a request and response integration pattern which means you send a request you also expect a response as well so that is synchronous so with regards to rest api soap api these are synchronous transaction bulk api is a synchronous transaction which has no eta of completion but you have some relaxation with regards to the governor limits as well number of sokal queries all of different governor limits you get some additional uh, enhancements for all those governor limits as well so, uh, and then uh, what are the different limits that has that counts under this particular soap api api total limits you know these are different uh, governor limits max max batches per day for example for soap the default batch size is 200 and also maximum batch size is 200 and with regards to bulk if you go to this particular page so this is a bulk data loader uh, page right from here you can monitor all of your bulk data load jobs you can see an organization can process 15000 batches in a 24 hour period so which means that is a reason uh, for large volume records if you ask which is a better option is it soap api or bulk api i would always recommend to go with bulk api because the processing rate would be faster and also uh, it's like the huge number of records would also be processed whereas in soap api it's like 200 would be the default size maximum number of records in one request right i will talk about this bulk api in detail in next session for today's session that's all i have maybe we can we can discuss in detail about the bulk api about the limits as well which we have not covered in detail in today's session in maybe in next session thank you so much for all the amazing feedback uh, for pro providing for all of your amazing feedback in our youtube channel and uh, please do continue to like share and comment and please do subscribe by uh, this one stop youtube channel if you like to be notified of the next video thank you have a great day bye bye